Hey guys, I'm Ben. Welcome to the Swanky Camp Productions channel and welcome to my living room. Next year, I am finally going to be doing some moto camping on the channel. Huge thanks to Moto Camp Nerd, who I now owe some videos to, so I've got to get out and do some camping and show you guys all this great gear that they sent me. Today we're just going to kind of do a brief overview of all the stuff that I've got. If you guys want to pick up any of this stuff, there will be an affiliate link for this stuff down in the description. I do have to say though, all of this stuff is sort of top of the line. The whole Moto Camp Nerd website is pretty much geared towards kind of the higher end of Moto Camping type stuff. So I think it only makes sense to start out with the tent. This is going to be the Copper Spur HV UL tent. This is the two person and this one weighs packed up like this three pounds, eight ounces. And this thing is tiny. I think my old tent that I used to take camping when I'm just going my truck was probably about three times as long as this thing was and at least twice, if not three or four times as big around. Rainfly. Oh, wait. We've of course also got the matching footprint. They do have these available and sometimes I believe they go on a sale where you get the footprint free with the tent. So it might be worth waiting for that. Ooh, this is gonna be bigger than I thought it was. Now the last tent that I had, the base was made out of essentially a tarp, so you didn't need any sort of barrier between the somewhat abrasive ground and the bottom of the tent. But on a tent like this where it's going to pack down really tightly like that, you need a little bit of extra protection because the base is not really going to be meant to be set up on twigs and rocks and gravel and that sort of thing. Whose idea was this to set this up in the living room? Because for some reason I was under the impression that this thing was small. I guess just when it's packed up. I'm sure I'm making this look much more difficult than it's supposed to be. Did I do something wrong? Buckles. Color coded buckles, even. So, of course, we've got the stakes, some rope, some of these. Honestly, not really sure where a lot of this goes. I'm not sure that I've got this rain fly on here quite correctly. Obviously, we've got to do some staking and stuff, but I'm not going to do that in my living room. So, when we get out to actually test this, I'll kind of go into a little more detail. And once I actually set it up a few more times, I can kind of show you some of the ins and outs of it. Still a lot to learn about it for now, but it definitely looks good. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. And I think it will be nice to have that extra space in there, even just for one person with all my gear and helmets and stuff. Oh, hi, cat. I think it will be nice. Obviously the back of the rain fly here has to get staked down as well. Got the little vent up here. What do you think, Kitty? It definitely feels very quality, but it also feels very thin. And I think, again, that's just because I'm not used to well, a backpacking or a bike packing tent. Next up is the all-important sleeping pad. I went with the Xped 8R, and that 8R is actually referencing the R value, which is basically just how they rate insulation. And as you can see here on the scale, this is for extremely cold camping. And I did go for the large version of this. Real trick is gonna be to see if I can get this stuff packed up like it was. Oh. Well, I suppose that should make things easier. Compression sack. So we'll get that thrown in the tent and blow it up with this guy here. So I should mention that this is sold separately. There we go. Woo! <laughs> this thing also works as a power bank to charge your phone or whatever other accessory you need. 
pretty sweet. Now, in general, I'm pretty against air mattresses, so I'm really interested to see how this thing feels. I think I've got it blown up just about as big as it'll go. And speaking of big, the Nemo Disco sleeping bag that I've got here is the long version, and this thing does seem pretty large. However, it can definitely pack down to a much smaller dimension than what you see here, and I think that will be a lot easier to do with these compression bags. So they don't currently have anything rated colder than this is. This is the 15 degree bag. And this is a down bag. It's sort of like a modified mummy type bag. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna like this. I don't think that I'd be happy in a mummy because I like to be able to move my feet around a little bit. But I think having the little bit of extra room that you've got in here, but still being able to pack it kind of tightly around yourself and sort of seal yourself up in it, I think will be nice on those colder nights. And I guess apparently I'll be able to use these for something else because this already comes with its own compression bag, of course. Definitely fills out my sleeping pad for sure, and I don't think I would want anything smaller, honestly. Even up at the shoulders here, I think it's kind of gonna over, overhang a little bit, but definitely seems like it should be a nice warm bag. We do have some vents here that you can open up if you get a little bit too warm. It does, of course, just kind of flip down the side like that, so. If you do get too warm, I can just toss that off. If I'm cold, I've even got my little mummy head wrap around deal there with a little bit of covers you can kind of pull up on yourself if it's really chilly. Let's get a pillow in there and see how that looks. Originally, I was looking for the actual pillow. I thought this was just the cover for it because the cover is removable and washable. I thought maybe they came separate. Couldn't find the pillow. Had to read through this label a couple times to realize that this actually is the pillow. This thing just pops out, and then I'll let the air out. There's some leg room in there. Well, that is cozy. <laughs> I could use to this. So the bag kind of turns with you when you go to roll, which is a little different compared to what I'm used to. The last sleeping bag I had was absolutely huge. And I gotta say, having this hood thing is really kind of nice. Yeah, it definitely feels like there's plenty of room. I can kind of feel the edges pretty easily with my feet down at the bottom, but I don't really think that's gonna be a problem. There's still enough room in there that I can kind of move around. Definitely enough chest room up here I don't think I'll have any problem, and if you guys don't already know, I'm 5'10 and like 160 pounds, something like that. So, obviously if you're a little bit bigger, this might fit you a little different, but there's plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom as far as uh, head to feet area, and I don't feel cramped or claustrophobic in here at all. Um, honestly, as big as the pad is down at the bottom here, I don't really think that having a much bigger bag would be all that much more of a, a convenience. Um, Really feels pretty comfortable in on this mat. Um, I've kind of had some back issues since an old snowboarding accident for a long time, and honestly, this feels really nice on my back. Uh, I hate sleeping on a regular air mattress because you really don't get any support. This thing, it seems like there's plenty of support. I had envisioned modal camping sort of similar to the camping trips that I would take when I was younger with junk gear, and I think this stuff is definitely going to help me get out in the woods and enjoy it a lot more. Okay, you get out of here with your nails. Nope. I don't think this stuff's meant for you. Get out. I can feel my head starting to sweat in here. <laughs> Let's get out of here before I fall asleep. Oh wait, the pillow though. No, you stay out of here too. Nope. Nope. No animal nails. <laughs> Back off. Nope. 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 It's our Kina. Sorry. As far as the pillow goes, I can't really honestly tell that it's there all that much. I mean, I think without it... Oh yeah, okay. It makes a difference. <laughs>
<laughs> makes a big difference. It's not quite as tall as the giant pillow that I normally use at home, but it is definitely gonna make a, a pretty big difference. And like I said, this cover is washable. So if you are a greasy hippie like me that only showers a couple times a week and you get dirty when you're out riding and camping and stuff like that, I think it'll be super nice to be able to just take this off and wash it when you get home. As far as the tent itself goes, this definitely is a nice place to be in here. It's really kind of a nice cozy space. I've got a bit of room on this side. I think there's more than enough room for a helmet there. I've got a little bit of room down here for smaller things and also a little bit of room on that side as well. Why do I want to sleep in there tonight? I really do. Hey Poochie. Found a box cat. So obviously the pump doubles as a lantern, which will be super nice. However, I think it will also be nice to maybe have a second light, which is why I asked him to send me this guy. And this thing does actually take regular old batteries, so that might be kind of annoying. That might be kind of nice. I guess we'll just have to get out and test it to see. I assume they'll last a good long time, and it won't be an issue. Generally, I like things that I can recharge, but honestly, I guess for camping, it might be nice to have the option to stick some new batteries in it if it goes dead. Is that brighter than the other one? I think it might be. Oh yeah. Also set that out on the table, I suppose. Kind of nice. Ooh. <laughs> Is that green now? What's going on? <laughs> I guess maybe I should have mentioned that. This does have a quiet mode. You don't want to wake up your neighbors. So I don't plan on doing much cooking to begin with, but I think eventually I will kind of gather a few more things, but I've kind of got the bare essentials. But of course, before you can do any cooking or eating, you need to wash up. So they sent me these two little things. These are like little single serve liquid soap that is in a little sheet. So I guess you just take a couple of these out, get them wet, and then they turn into hand soap. So that's kind of neat. Definitely a nice compact thing that you don't have to worry about spilling anywhere. Then of course, we've got some wipes here because we all get dirty when we're out camping and messing around with motorcycles, so this will be super nice. Honestly, I, I generally tend to wash my hands way too much when I'm at home and not probably enough when I'm out camping. For some reason, out in the woods, I feel like everything is, is clean enough, or at least I'd, I'm not worried about the dirt that's out there. So I, I think maybe it will be nice to have these, especially moto camping though, because if you're messing around with a greasy chain or your motor oil or something like that, you definitely don't want to be then preparing a meal after that. So I think this will be nice for that and maybe just to kind of clean yourself up a bit if you're gonna head into town. I'm super excited about this thing. If you guys have not looked into jet boil stuff, there's actually quite a few of them out there. I'm certainly, again, not an expert on it, but I will definitely be using this thing to make myself some coffee. And because I went with the Mini Moto here, I think this should be conducive to making coffee. It's obviously made to drink coffee right out of if you wanna do it that way but this will be somewhat decent for cooking as well because there is some modulation to it. It's not just always on as hot as it can get and that's sort of where jet boil started is basically making something that would boil water really fast. But obviously if you're gonna be doing cooking, that's not necessarily what you want. I've got the little stand inside of the cover there. A little burner stand. I've actually got some measuring devices in there, so that doubles as a bowl. So this is the actual burner itself, and then the modulating valve is right here, so we can kind of adjust our flame. This would, of course, thread into a canister. I did pick a couple of those up. I probably will go out on the slider, maybe even the bike yet this year, and make some coffee out in the woods to practice. But this, of course, would sit kind of below and on top of that canister. And then this guy sits on top. I'm not sure what the purpose of it is, but this does also fit on here, I think. Stay tuned, we'll figure it out eventually. This thing definitely seems pretty good size though, and I think that would be nice when we're cooking some meals around the campfire here. So we've got a few things to test out. I'm also really excited to try these things out. This is essentially just like a tea bag, no mess. You don't have to worry about grounds or anything like that. You just toss it when you're done. Pretty slick. I'm actually really looking forward to making some hot soup out on the trail with this thing, and it looks like they sent me their little business card here with a can opener on it. I'm not sure how the heck that thing works. I generally like just the regular old pop top cans, but uh, I think this will definitely be nice to have and interesting to try. And to eat that, we've got some of these here, which I think will be nice. I wanted a container to keep them in to kind of keep them from getting mixed in with 
the rest of my gear. And then of course, once you run yourself out of fuel, you need to get rid of that canister. And if you guys are unaware, you're not actually supposed to put any sort of compressed canister in your recyclables until you puncture it, that is. And it looks like we've got this special little tool that I think must thread right onto the gas canister. And then there's a sharp point underneath this piece of plastic here that pops into it and then makes it safe to recycle. You guys ever think about how nice it is that somebody comes and picks up your garbage and recyclables? What the heck would we do with that stuff without those guys? Because we've got a couple little Moto Camp Nerd things. I also got a shirt that I've got to try out and sent us some nerds. <laughs> I think that's it. And by it, I mean, holy crap, that is a lot of awesome camping gear that I cannot wait to get out and try. Hopefully you guys are just as excited for some moto camping videos as I am. I cannot wait to get this stuff out and get out in the woods and spend some time with my dad, spend some time maybe even just by myself doing some solo camping. I cannot wait. So huge thanks to Moto Camp Nerd. Again, if you guys want to pick any of this stuff up or you just want to browse the website, there'll be a link for it down in the description. If you guys use those links, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but they send a little bit my way for sending you their way. Definitely appreciate that. It makes this whole YouTube thing a lot easier for me to do. Thank you guys that have been supporting the channel through affiliate links, through Patreon, everything like that. And again, huge, huge thanks to Moto Camp Nerd. I could not be doing this stuff without them. So thanks guys.